It was a weekend of wins for EKU sports teams. Welcome to the show. Cross Country wins the championship of the OVC on both the men's and women's side. Volleyball gets a weekend sweep at home. Soccer wins a tournament game. And on the road, Mark Elder's football team beats Murray in the in-state rivalry game. You guys played really well in that football game. Yeah, I was really pleased with our team. Uh, we, we played well in, in all three phases, particularly in the first half. I uh, thought that we came out and... and were sharp and, and played well in all three phases. You know, uh, we just couldn't finish off drives in the second half offensively. Uh, we got stopped on downs and, and ended up having to punt a couple times. But uh, even then, I thought that we went out and executed fairly well in all three phases. So I was I was pleased with uh, how the guys came out with energy, with, with a lot of juice, uh, their execution, their physicality in general. I was pleased with the game. On the defensive side of the football, this is the second game in a row where your team has strung together the opponent punt, 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 both first half and second half. And that gets them off the field. Your offense takes a little pressure off your offense. Absolutely. So we, uh, we forced a couple turnovers, which was great to see. And then we had five three and outs, if I remember correctly. So I, I thought that our defense really did a nice job. Um, at the end of the game, you know, we gave up one drive. They went the length of the field, 98 yards. We were in a situation where at that point in time, um, just simply trying to eliminate any type of quick score because uh, you're up. 20 points, and as long as you don't give up a big one uh, with that amount of time left in the game, you're going to come away with the victory. So we gave up some yards, ended up giving up a touchdown there on that one, but uh, it essentially sealed the game because of the fact that there was very little time left after that, and, and we were able to recover the onside. So but our defense did a great job all day long, uh, really pleased with how they stopped the run. And, and was pleased in general with their performance. Yeah, under 300 yards uh, of offense total and under 100 yards rushing the last two weeks. That's what the defense has done. Meanwhile, the offense over 200 yards rushing again, 279. And Daryl McCleskey, back-to-back 100-yard games. Daryl had a career-high 144. Yeah, he's, he... Uh Got a big one early, and that, that certainly helped him jump out in front as far as the yardage is concerned. But in general, I mean, 55 for 279, really pleased with how we blocked things. I uh, thought we did a really nice job as far as those things were concerned. And uh, we were able to control the game, you know, control the ball, uh, keep it out of their hands, and, and move the chains consistently running the football. So very pleased with, with how that's, that's taken form. And us having the ability to do both successfully really is, is big because at times this year we've struggled in running the football, and, and that's put a lot of weight on our passing game. Uh, they've had to go out and perform, and that, that's difficult, you know, when, when you're, you can mix up the coverages and try to confuse the quarterback and things like that. But when you're able to uh, be effective on both running and throwing, that's really when you're going to be humming on all cylinders offensively. It's an Eastern Illinois team that hosts Eastern Kentucky this Saturday in Charleston. Uh, they were at the top of the league before losing back-to-back -to, -back to Jacksonville State, the number three team in the country, and then uh, against Tennessee Martin last week. So they come in off a couple of losses, Eastern Kentucky off a couple of wins. Should be a good matchup on Saturday in Charleston. Yeah, I think it's going to be a great matchup. I think they're a very, very good team. Uh, two weeks ago against Jacksonville State, they, they had the lead at halftime. They played really well. Um, you know, so I think that they're, they're an outstanding team. And then really turnovers got them this past week against Tennessee Martin. I mean, that's, uh, you know, the game, that was the, the point of the game. The whole, the whole big deal of that game was big turnovers. So uh, I think that they're a very talented team. I think they're outstanding on defense. They're, they're uh, very active up front. I think they got a really good D-line. I think their linebackers, I mean, this might be one of the better linebacking cores in the conference, uh, play a couple guys there, and I think they're really good. And then they're, they're long and athletic in the secondary. Very, uh, very aggressive, good tacklers, physical. Um, offensively, a lot of experience back offensive line-wise. Uh, a couple really good running backs, a couple receivers that, that are explosive. Um, the quarterback situation, I'm a little unsure of what we're going to see there. They've played two guys uh, since their, their starter got hurt at the beginning of the year. And um, I think the one was a little bit banged up for a couple weeks and didn't play. So it's going to be interesting to see whether he's 100%. He played some last week, but I think both those guys have gone out and done really well. So, um, you know, I think we've got a big challenge. I think they're solid on special teams. Uh, and so it's going to be a big challenge. Uh, this is the time of year where every team gets nicked up. And so you're, you're going to have to ask, like every team, guys to play different positions, step up or fill in. And that's just life in a college football season. 
Yeah, uh, Gladiator Sport. I mean, that's part mm -hmm. of the deal. You know, you sign up for it. You know, there's injuries as part of it. Um, sure, we've had our fair share, uh, just like everybody else is playing the game does. So uh, I'm sure that we're no more beat up than anybody else. Um, you know, everybody's going through those issues right now of trying to figure out their depth chart, who they're going to shuffle. Uh, special teams is a nightmare because you're trying to figure out who's going to play where. So um, same issues everybody in the country's going through. Victory's the best tonic. Let's keep uh, sipping right. that tonic. Yes. All right. Thanks, Mark. Appreciate it. Don't forget the Colonels against Eastern Illinois, 2 o'clock Eastern time. Start for the Eastern Bowl, as I always like to call it. We'll have our radio coverage at 100.7 FM. You can find it online at ekusports.com, on the phone with your TuneIn app, and there will be coverage on the OVC Digital Network. We're going to stay with football when we come back. We'll talk to Eastern starting quarterback Tim Boyle when Inside EKU Sports continues. Every day is a concept that few people can commit to. Every day requires a level of dedication that forces you to test your limits. Every day I'll give back to the community because I draw strength from their support. Every day the sounds of your cheers will echo through my mind. Knowing that you have my back means I can always look forward. Every day I'll be too tired to sweat and my bones will ache. Every day will provide me with the slight edge that I need to succeed. Champions are built every day. Welcome back to the show. We continue to talk football. Let's meet the senior quarterback, the Colonels, Tim Boyle. I say senior, actually a graduate student now. I am, yep. Graduated last May and just taking some classes right now to stay eligible, so I'm having a lot of fun with it. Transferred in from Connecticut, sat out last year, now leading this team. It's your team, and mm -hmm. you got to be a leader at quarterback, and yep. you've certainly shown that. What's it been like to be able to do that? Well, it's been fun taking over the team, like you said, and and making it my own and, and the seniors, honestly. So, um, you know, when I first got here, it was a little different, you know, the transition from UConn, but the coaches and players made it a, a very smooth transition for me, so very grateful for them. They always tell quarterbacks, every coach will say to a quarterback, manage the game, manage mm -hmm. the game, manage the game, play within yourself. Your line has improved, and now the running game has mm -hmm. produced over 200 yards. With the running game going, how does that make you a better quarterback? Honestly, my role this year is to be a game manager, and I'm, I'm totally okay with that, it's especially the fact that we're running the ball so well. Um, you know, in, in earlier weeks, we, we struggled with that, which, you know, we had to rely on the pass game, uh, which is fine. But when the run game, like you said, is picking up, it takes a lot of pressure off me. Uh, it takes a lot of pressure off the defense because we get to run the clock down a little bit. So, um, you know, when our offense is clicking on all cylinders, we're, we're pretty dangerous. It's awesome to see this offensive line mature as the season goes along. I know banged up a bit, as mm -hmm. every team is with injuries as we go through, but only six sacks, mm -hmm. uh, and you've done a good job avoiding them when the pressure's there. Yeah. Eighth in the country, that helps too. Yeah, the offensive line has done actually a, a really good job this year. Um, you know, we lost a couple guys last year, and people thought we were going to be a little weaker offensive line, but that's not the case at all. Um, I think the two outside guys, both of our tackles, Boogie and, and, and Cam, have done a really good job of making sure that the, 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 the good defensive ends in this league have not gotten to me. Uh, Skid has been leading the charge up front in the middle, uh, and both of our guards have been doing a great job. So I'm extremely pleased with them. and I, I take them out to eat every once in a while, and when the season ends, I'm definitely going to take them out. The uh Parents have been very supportive of you. The only game they've missed, you've told me so far, is the Murray game. They've got travel plans for mm -hmm. the for the last three of yeah, your career. Yeah, they've, they've been so very supportive. Uh, my whole entire family has been great. Uh, coming to every game, I mean, you, literally, you, you fly out Friday night, you come for a game Saturday, you leave Sunday morning. So. Um, I'm extremely grateful for my parents and my, my two sisters for being awesome. The, this is a teaching ground for you because you mm -hmm. want to teach the game of football. You, yeah. You'd like to be a coach, so future plans mm -hmm. after, after graduation? Yeah, so you know, after graduation, you know, after when I'm done playing this year, I'm probably going to train, you know, try to you know, take my shot at the NFL right. and, and whatever leads that way. But, um, yeah, I want to coach. You know, I love the game of football. Uh, it's been my passion since I was a little kid. And you know, if I was a coach, I wouldn't work a day in my life. So that's, that's the way I view it. And, uh, you know, just getting a GA job somewhere, working my way up the ranks and going from there. So football will be in the fabric of your life, and it really mm -hmm. teaches life lessons. Sure does. And I've learned a lot of valuable lessons in football. Um, you know, first, first is leadership that comes to mind, and obviously teamwork. It's just teaching life lessons of being knocked down and, and having to, you know, pick yourself back up and, and keep charging forward. All right, Tim, good luck the rest of the year. We've enjoyed watching you this senior season. Thank you so much for having me. All right, that is Tim Boyle, the quarterback of the Colonels. When we come back, we'll talk about a senior-laden soccer team. They're in the tournament and doing well. Back with one of those seniors when we come back.
EKU is the campus beautiful. The school of opportunity, where you are always welcome. And it feels like home. We're changing how we look, but our mission is still the same. To help you expand your knowledge, discover your passion, and unlock your purpose. Be a Colonel. Your time is now. Deep back of the end zone. Brown got it. Four drives inside. Put it up. See this one swung and missed it. Now Smith again. Block point tech. Nice turnaround by Johnson. Near post. Kick in. Any place, anytime. Find it here. The OBC Digital Network. The EKU soccer team heads to the semifinal round of the Ohio Valley Conference Tournament for a Friday game against Tennessee Tech after defeating an opponent in the quarterfinal round at home. It was SIU Edwardsville 2-1. Emmy Carroll is one of the seniors. Good revenge win over them after they knocked you out of the OVC finals last year. Yeah, it was a great win for us. We came out with a lot of energy, and we were determined to win. I say six seniors, and that's the core of, of a group that has led the resurrection of Eastern Kentucky soccer. Do you relish the fact that every game now could be your last game, or does it put added pressure on you? Yeah, I think that adds like the competition to it, too, because we know it's one and done when it hits tournament, and it's really pushed the seniors to really bring the energy up. It was interesting that the uh, goal that was the game winner was by one of the young players in, in uh, Katie Schaefer. That was a last minute goal in the first half. That was a big goal when it was tied at 1-1. Yeah, it was awesome for her to step up and put that in the back of the net. So now you have these six seniors, but there's there's a history there for many of you. There are a lot of players from the greater Cincinnati area. You're all in a soccer academy, or a lot of you were. And there was a connection to your current college coach, Nick Flory. Tell us about that. Yeah, so Nick was actually an assistant at the club that six of us attended, which was Ohio Elite Soccer Academy. So that's how we knew him, and then he left from there. But so Nick coached some of us at a really young age. So when he's announced as the, the head coach last year, now he's in his second year, uh, that had to be a nice connection as you make a transition from one coach to the other. Yeah, we were ecstatic because we know how he wants to play and his style. So we were all really excited. What is his style? It's more of a possession based, and that's what we were looking for when we came here. This is a game on Friday down at Murray in the semifinal round against the Tennessee Tech team that you beat last year, but they beat you late in this season two to nothing. What will you learn from that game to try to pull off the win and get to the finals on Sunday? I mean, there's definitely no excuse for how we played them this year, but I think we are going to learn from that, and we know their weaknesses that we can take advantage. And I think everyone is really excited to get the revenge back on them. I know you're, uh, you know, it's not just soccer. There's an academic component, obviously, to being a, a student athlete. What, what has soccer taught you about the academic side of college? Um, probably not to proc procrastinate, really. Mm -hmm. That you have to take advantage of the free time that you have and dedicate that to the academic side. I always find that w when I'm busier, I seem to manage my time better and then things go better. Do you Yeah, do you I sense think so, that? too, yeah. yeah. Definitely. So post-college, what, what, what's the plans for Amy Carroll? Um, I'm going to move back home. And I don't know. I'd love to work in the sports with advertising or marketing with um, college athletics. So I'm hoping to look into that. So as you go into this tournament, if you get by Tennessee Tech, the, the big uh, elephant in the room is Murray State. They've dominated this conference, even though they got upset last year in the semifinal round. Uh, do you see Murray State as the favorite? And uh, I know all the other teams in this tournament feel that, that they can be the one to finally end Murray State's streak. I think we all want Murray to make it to the finals, and we want to play them because I think we can beat them. We should have beat them this year. So what's Nick's final word to, to the team as you go out on the field on Friday against Tennessee Tech? What's the key? Um, he always says, um, do a performance that you're going to be proud of. 
and that's that's about it. Okay, good luck on Friday and uh, the you. rest through the OBC. That's Amy Carroll, one of the soccer players, one of six seniors on this team that is heading in again to the semifinal round at noon our time against Tennessee Tech on Friday down at Murray, Kentucky. When we come back here on Inside EKU Sports, we'll go back inside to talk about basketball. Nick Mayo joins us after this. We are more than just athletes. We inspire scholars. We inspire leaders. We inspire champions. We inspire family. This is the Ohio Valley Conference. Time now to talk EKU basketball and power forward Nick Mayo joins us. Two-time all-conference in your first two years, over a thousand points. So individually, uh, your consistency has been what's impressed me, Nick. Talk to me about that. Uh, I mean, just been working on my game a lot. Like uh, this summer, instead of going up home, stayed here, worked out the whole summer. So hopefully, you know, translate uh, my work ethic and my individual play and, you know, get some wins along the road with it. 35th uh, all-time in points right now, 34 straight double-figure games. You certainly hope with Zach Charles is a year older, DeAndre Dishman back from an injury, and then the addition of Jackson Davis, the Butler transfer from a high school in Lexington, take a little pressure off potential double teams. That's got to mm. be a, a, a good thought for you that you won't face it, perhaps as many double teams. Yeah, I'm... Um, Sure, I'm still going to get some double teams, but like for those guys out there, uh, their ability to score around the rim and from the perimeter, like all us bigs can take it outside or inside. So uh, adding those guys and returners is going to be big for us this year. And good depth out of, at the guard positions as well. It seems like uh, if we can avoid the injuries, and we've had some in, in preseason, mm -hmm. but that, that depth will, will be a team that you can press a little bit more is what I know Dan McCann yeah, would like to yeah, see. Yeah, so that's what we've been doing in practice, uh, working on our press. Uh, we got like our main core from last year, so we already know like coaches, principals, and stuff like that. And uh, with the returning guys, uh, we, we, got, we got all – different people for positions. So, you know, as long as we stay healthy, we can be good. So uh, let me divert from basketball, summer vacation. You guys don't get much of a break, mm. but you, you go with five of your teammates back to your home in, in the central part of Maine. Mm -hmm. And so you, how tall were the guys in, in, in your Honda car? Uh, there are uh, five of us and I'm six, nine. We had six, seven, <laughs> six, 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 two, six foot. So we, we were packed in there. So the sardine kernels make it to, to Maine. Uh, uh, how'd the guys that have never been to the Northeast like the lobster and the coast? And yeah. how, was, how was the vacation? I think, I think they loved it. They say they did. So, I mean, we, we went to uh, my grandparents' house. That's where we get all the lobster. They live on an island. So we took, we took their boat out, went across the ocean onto a beach. Uh, had like 100 lobsters. We just... We're out there living life. <laughs> Sounds awesome. So now you go into this season before the first game of the year in Houston against Rice in the regular season. You play an exhibition game against Georgetown College, a team that has a player you played on against last year from Texas Tech in uh, Shadell <laughs> Millinghouse. He's averaging mm -hmm. 27, and Georgetown has scored over 100 points, as much as 125, already played four games. So this is quite a test against mm -hmm. one of the NAIA powerhouses. Yeah, they, they got basically... All their returning guys, uh, they're very athletic. They score in transition, so it's going to be a test for us first game, but I'm excited for it. you got to be pumped about I mean, I know there's a lot of pressure on this team. Didn't make the OVC tournament the last two years, but this is a team with a lot of talent. You've got to see that, that the sky's the limit this season. Yeah, definitely, and like the main thing I've just been saying is as long as we can stay healthy, uh, we got all the pieces. We're putting it together, so 
we can stay healthy, I think we have a good shot. Okay, Nick, thanks a lot. Good luck uh, throughout this basketball season. Thank you. All right, that's Nick Mayo. As the Colonels will play a game against Georgetown College Friday night at 7. There will be no radio or television coverage, but it's free admission, so come out and get that first glimpse of the Colonels in a game that doesn't count on the win-loss record, but an important exhibition for EKU to get game ready for the season, which begins a week from Friday night against Rice, followed by a game on Monday against Ole Miss. And that does it for another edition of Inside EKU Sports. You can always keep up with the Colonels. Just like and follow our channels on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We'll see you again next week.